We have a couple of guests that we kind of invited here at lunchtime. <laughs> um, Jason and I were over to the, um, and I, Kyle was there too, but we were over to the Occupy Halifax, Hal, ha, Occupy Nova Scotia at the Halifax Parade Square, and um, we had the opportunity to speak to many of the people that are, it's, if you have not been there, it's quite a, quite a sight. It really is worth going over. Very well organized. I, I said, who's in charge? They said, there's nobody in charge. They're not, that's not how they work. They work by consensus and, and it's quite amazing to watch. And I'm gonna take, kind of take liberty here from the chair, but uh, before Jason brings him in, one of the things that they ask, so we asked, what can we do as labor uh, to help you? You know one of the things that they asked for, in fact, it was the only thing they asked for, is water. They have no, because it's not just the, um, and mostly young people for, that we met with, but they're there and there's a lot of the homeless people in, in Halifax, people with mental health, um, people that are you know unemployed, underemployed, that are also visiting the food tents and you know going there and, and for the socialization of the event. And they don't have any running water, so it's becoming a health issue. They are taking their bike with this tiny little trailer attached to this 10 speed, whatever you call them now, and you know those big three, big, you know those big gallons, five gallons, wherever they are of the water, they're quite heavy. And they're actually taking their bike down to a st uh, store and then putting three of them on their bike and taking it back. And they were wondering if there was any way that we could ourselves collectively think how we can get water to them. It would be really great if we could get the Trade Center, one of those places, to run a hose down there so they had running water for, you know, to be able to clean things and, and for sanitary reasons. Plus, they need drinking water. And at the minimum, and I know that qp has been very adamant and, and rightfully so, and we all should be on bottled water, but in the instance here, they don't have, they don't have water to have to take it on a, on a bike. So I think collectively, and I don't know if we'll decide that here right now as we wait for these speakers, um, but I think collectively we can put our heads together and figure out how we can assist Occupy Nova Scotia in one of the fundamental things we need to survive, and that's water. So um, Jason, do you want to bring them up and introduce them? Thank you for the welcome. <laughs> and uh, it, it was, we weren't planning on being here, but it is an incredible, incredible honor and uh, honor to be here today speaking to you. Um, I guess we'll start by introducing ourselves. My name's Brian. Uh, well, if you'd like to And I'm Naomi. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ryan. And I'm John. And I'd like to say, I, there, I can't presume to speak on behalf of the entire Occupy Nova Scotia movement. One of the great strengths of this movement is that it is a diverse group of many kinds of people. And so instead of coming here alone, we came here as a small group. So I hope that's okay. Uh, I'd like to just open with a little bit about, about the movement itself. I, I started being involved with the movement about a week before the occupation started, and I was just curious. This was something that had been going on all over the world, and now it was starting to happen in Halifax. And so I, I wanted to check it out. And immediately, this was a movement that seemed to resonate. It resonated with me. It resonates with a wide range of people. There, there isn't, say, a hot button um, tagline or a hot button issue or a hot button demand. And that's because the problems that the world is facing right now are, are broad, systematic problems. The problems are not problems with simple answers. And so Occupy attracts a wide range of people. We have young people, we have retired people, we have workers, and people are passionate about environmental issues or, or labor issues, or people are passionate about unemployment or debt. And there seems to be a general consensus that a small amount of people in the world control far too much power and wealth and decision-making ability. And so Occupy is for what well, we say for the 99%. This is for people from all walks of life to stand in solidarity with each other. 
the, the media, the popular media likes to slam us for, for having no definition of progress. How can you have progress when you have no demand? How can you have progress when you have no goal? But, but we don't buy into that at all. Every day there are new people passing through the occupation, asking questions, and starting to talk about these issues. For the first time in my lifetime, the conversation about the world being screwed up is no longer a conversation on the sidelines. This is a conversation happening in the mainstream, in the spotlight, and around the world on a scale that has never happened before. And I think it's important to point out that the people actually camping at the occupation are the small but visible minority of the Occupy movement. For whatever reason, not everyone can afford to spend weeks at a time in a tent in Grand Parade. <laughs> yeah, who would have thought? But, but every day people come by with support, with stories. We have people, grandmothers who come by who say they haven't felt hope in years, and now they do. And people who bring food and bring supplies, and people who, most importantly, talk. People who are talking about these issues, talking about the Occupy movement, coming to rallies, coming to events, and bringing this further and further into the public spotlight. Every day this is progress, and we're one week in, and it's, it's only going to get stronger from here. So I'm Naomi, and um, my involvement be began when uh, they had um, a protest against poverty. Um, I've been working with the homeless for eight years, and um, I see people who can't help themselves not getting the help that they need. And, um, you know, it, I thought that it's not that bad in this country when um, only the, the very helpless are struggling to find help. And then I, I got a university education, and um, I have to say I did fairly well. <laughs> and, uh, and now with my degree, um, I'm working two jobs, and I, I can't afford um, my rent. Um, and it's not just me. Um, the system isn't working for us. We, we work hard, and we do our best. And we learn, and um, we feel left out. We've had promises for better housing solutions in Halifax, and I'm afraid that's not happening. And even broader than that, we've been thirsting for community, and um, we haven't been finding that in the conventional ways, unfortunately. So um, uh, our needs are diffuse, our um, interests, but um, to come to a place where community be, is being built and where these issues are being discussed um, and where apathy is being broken and um, there's a desire to change and desire to address these things and it's being approached with hope has been um, really wonderful. And so I thank the Occupy movement for, for sparking this and I thank you for supporting us. Hi, I'm Ryan, and uh, as she said here, thank you for your support and your participation in this. I know that uh, so many of you have been down at the Occupy site and spreading the word to, uh, to your people, and uh, it, it is, it's wonderful, and, um, and I can't even express the gratitude we're feeling. Um, my personal view right now of, of what's going on and what our issues are is that, um, like Brian said, the media likes to say that we're purposeless and that we don't have any demands and we don't have any goals or anything concrete. But I think that basically the vast majority of issues that traditionally individual activist groups have tried on their own to address all have a pretty similar root cause. Um, massive consolidation of wealth and power and uh, you know the, the rampant corruption within our government, the uh, <laughs> uh, 
Um, and that just the, the general futility of trying to deal with directly with politicians and trying to deal directly with the media. So we kind of circumvented that. And uh, we, we've given ourselves our own voice that isn't dependent on them. And uh, it, it's been massively successful uh, worldwide in destroying apathy, in giving people hope, in giving people the feeling that maybe what they say, what they think, can be listened to and can affect change. And that's kind of the miracle of the Occupy movement. So um, that's why I'm there. I'm there to help build that community. I'm there to, uh, to try to engage in the experiment that we're all uh, participating in, which is a self-governing community, a community that takes care of one another and rebuilds the, uh, those connections that have been fractured for so long in so many different uh, communities worldwide. And uh, I, I, every time I, I'm there, I, I'm filled with joy and optimism and hope. And uh, once again, thank you all for, uh, for having us here and for, uh, and for your continued support. Uh, my name is John, and uh, we were asked to come down here and kind of give an idea of what we're doing out there in the square. Um, and everyone's got their own individual reasons, and I've been fortunate enough that uh, I've lived on the uh, better side. I've lived up with the 1%, um, but I've lived at the bottom half of the, or the bottom part of the 99% as well. So I'm in a unique position to be able to see things from both perspectives. And uh, so what I've always seen is that there, there's a lot more people out there that are in the bottom 99% that really aren't getting the help they deserve. And uh, <clears throat> I heard him mentioning as we were walking through that part of the reason that you guys asked us here was that there was a little bit of uncertainty or unclarity on what we're doing down there. And I guess you could, uh, I mean, we're in a room full of labor union representatives and you could look at what we're doing as kind of a world union. Um, the whole idea of unions is to look out for the workers, to make sure that all er workers are receiving the same benefits, the same equal treatment and the same fairness. And that's what we're working towards. Um, so in essence, we are kind of a giant world union that's working towards equality and fairness for all. And every time you guys go on strike, it, it may be, uh, or, or have a con an issue that you guys have to address, you address it together as a group. You get together and you have solidarity. And that's what we're doing here. Um, we may not always have the exact specific answers. It's a learning process. Uh, but someone told me down there at the, <coughs> pardon me, at the square that, uh, we don't have an end. What's your end game? Well, this is just the beginning, and we're not sure where it's going, so we don't really have an end game. We're more concentrated on the start. And for us, this is the start of a process that's going to lead to conversation, that's going to affect change for everybody and not just the wealthy. Thank you for having us here. Questions, yep. is that okay? Fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. Microphone two, I think, was first. Four. Or four, I mean. Oh, yeah, there's a couple. Yeah. <clears throat> Kevin Marsh and delegate. I'd just like to uh, uh, say something to the chair if we could pass a hat for Nova Scotia Occupy. <laughs> I just, I, the reason I, Joan and I left is that we were going to get, put you on notice this afternoon that we we're going to do that tomorrow morning, so. <laughs> <laughs> so it will be passed. We just had okay. to figure out just the when. Okay. Thank okay. you, brother. Thank, Thank you, brother. This, that way it gives you more time to get money. Because <laughs> our hat don't take plastic. <laughs> okay. Uh, point, of point of privilege. Point of privilege, um, brother. If whatever we collect here, can we have the Fed uh, put a, a match it? Well, that's something we'd have to look at because they've been motivated to get that Okay, the 
I don't think there's going to be a problem, but that's a slick way to getting it through. That was, wasn't really a point of privilege. <laughs> Mike, too. Now I know why you want it, Mike, for Jay. <laughs> yeah, that's easy to follow. Yeah. Uh, sisters and brothers, I was over there at lunch, and I've been following the Occupy movement on Twitter, and I've been uh, watching it on the news, watching the media and everything else. But I just want to say, uh, when the brother over there was talking about think of us as a world union, I got chills when I was over there. Joan and I, we, we brought uh, some raincoats and some blankets and gift cards and whatever over there, sort of as a donation from NSGEU. But uh, what was going on was there was ha a two-minute meeting happening. And uh, uh, a guy ran over to me and he said, uh, would you be interested in attending our two-minute meeting? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'd be interested in attending the the meeting. So I went over and uh, not knowing anything and being welcomed in there, it, it was great for that at first. But then uh, a big conversation took place in regards to uh, their Facebook account and uh, what went on last night on the Facebook account. Apparently somebody said something that uh, was not right and was racist, right? And uh, they were addressing it in their meeting, but everybody was welcome into the meeting, meaning Occupy Nova Scotia was open to everybody, which gave me chills. And to hear everybody work together in consensus building, like in a consensus building uh, exercise, it, it was just amazing. I, I like, well, every, I'm a proponent for human rights. I, I fight, fight, fight all the time. And to see other people doing it, I just get really excited. So I, I was getting the chills at the time. And I want to tell everybody, it was a proud moment. And I, I thank you. And I want to thank you again in front of these delegates for having a conversation and having everybody say their say. But at the same time, it's advocating for everybody. And equality was first and foremost amongst you. So thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Um, microphone two. Oh, sorry, two. Well, that, I didn't scratch them off. My, microphone one. Is that me? That's yeah. You. Okay. Uh, Rick Wiseman, NSGEU. Um, we kind of live in a world of winning and losing. And what we see in the media when it's targeting the occupation is what is the measure of success? And uh, we're seeing a lot of, a lot of criticism around it. We've seen it on CBC with Kevin O'Leary and the comments that he made. And I think that the message that we need to deliver, and I see it represented well among you four in particular, I believe it was Ryan that started to touch on it, was our, our own brother on the right, Ryan. Yep. Ryan. <laughs> um, I, I believe he touched on it. And we need to take our own measures of success and not allow the media to try to slant it. And one of the, the points to make is what the 99% has done already in the very short, term, short time this occupation has been alive is that it's taken the 99%, reminded them that they do have a voice, they have an ability to exercise that voice, and they should go to the streets and use it. So regardless of any outcome, if the end game of this occupation is that the 99% is reminded that they have a voice, then I think we've all been successful. And I think that's the message that should be delivered, and I think you guys are doing a fantastic job of it. So thank you. Uh, microphone four, and instead of using our acronyms or, or our letters, uh, because they may not know who we are, would you say, the, uh, spell it out, not spell it out, but just who your union is? <laughs> Thank you. Microphone four. Yes, I'm Shannon Kelly, and I work at Dalhousie University, Nova Scotia Government and General Employees Union. I, I think this is wonderful. First of all, it's the young people. Uh, it just blows me away. I work in a young person's environment, naturally. That's what keeps me young. But being on the opposite end, getting ready to retire and go out the door, I have not seen this much activity in the young people since the 60s. And I think this is so fantastic. You see a problem, you're recognizing it, and you're working on it. And as a unionized person who we hear that we may lose unionized jobs and they won't be here for the next generation. You may not technically be the unionized person, but as a union, as a solidarity group fighting for the betterment of all, that's what you are. Thank you. Microphone one. Hi, 
Kelly Murphy, uh, Nova Scotia Government and General Employees Union, Local 63, and Vice President representing young workers on the Nova Scotia Federation of Labor. I don't have a question, I just have a comment, and I think you guys are fantastic. You guys are amazing, and I just, if, if delegates have not been down there, you really have to go down there and just experience it. It's such a warm, inviting group. Um, There's a dance party last Friday that was just a hoot. The rallies that they have, it's open mic. Really strongly encourage you to take the time, go down and support this cause and support this great bunch of people that are doing wonderful things for, for everyone in this room. That's all, you guys. The, uh, oh, pardon me. <laughs> the uh, rally slash dance party is now going to be a weekly event, incidentally, so uh, <laughs> come dance in solidarity. Microphone one again. Trevor Beckerson, Canadian Union of Postal Workers, Halifax Dartmouth District Labor Council. I, I had the pleasure of addressing the group at Occupy Nova Scotia and at the Parade Square about a week ago. Actually, Brian had called me and asked me to come down, and it was a great honor to speak before this group. Um, we here as unions, we do some really great things in our society, but these people are working on a whole different level than us. And I have to tell you, there's a lot we can learn from the Occupy movement about democracy and participation. In fact, there's some things that are sorely lacking in our own unions that can really be improved by taking a lesson from these people. So I would say if you haven't gotten down there, you need to get down there and you need to participate in what they're doing and it will change how you view It'll change how you view youth, as we've heard many times here. It'll change how you view your own work as a unionist as well. Um, this is the biggest exercise in social democracy that we've had in this country, frankly, since the Winnipeg general strike. It's the biggest thing we've had in 100 years, and it's going to affect politics, and it's going to affect Canadian society for a long, long time to come. And I really, really encourage you all, be part of it. Be part of this future because this is the way we're gonna operate from now on. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm, I'm skipping microphone three because he's here for a different reason. Microphone four. Uh, yes, thank you, brother. Mark Rogers, Public Service Alliance of Canada, Union of National Defense Employees, 80409. Not to belabor uh, this discussion, but I'm going to anyway. As important as every single resolution that we passed here this morning are gonna pass in the next couple of days, I, I, I seriously believe in all of my heart this trumps all of it. Because this is about social democracy. And if we as a union and we as citizens don't support what uh, this group, Occupy Nova Scotia, Occupy Wall Street, Occupy the whole freaking world is doing, <laughs> then I challenge you to, st I, you best stay away from the microphone because I don't think that we'll speak anything more powerful, anything that's going to build democracy and build society and build community more than what we're doing here today. So I've been down to the event a couple of times. I'm gonna read a couple of comments. Um, first off, just how terribly proud I am that these young and not so young people uh, are doing down in, uh, in the parade square for all of us. Um, one comment was uh, made a YouTube video. Uh, some, uh, some journalist said, well, uh, I don't really think much about it. It seems awful low budget to me. I think he's missing the point. It is low budget, stupid. That's the whole idea about democracy. You don't need money to have democracy. Sorry, I'm yelling. Um, one very quick story. I was at a uh, NDP AGM last night, and I was approached by a longtime uh, NDP um, activist um, who prouds himself of being as left as he can possibly be left, um, my, Fred, Fred, my friend Fred Williams. And Fred said, Mark, um, I want to get down to the Occupy event, but he has a bicycle, and he didn't think that he wanted to pedal his bicycle all the way down there. Although, for those of you from the Valley, he did pedal from Colebrook to White Rock for an AGM last night. We put his bike in a truck and took it home at 9 o'clock at night. Um, Fred said, I want to go down. I said, let's pass the hat. So in a meeting of 30 people, we collected $200. So this senior, I would put Fred, and I hope nobody knows, I'm gonna guess maybe 65, he looks a bit older, but certainly uh, a wonderful under activist, um, is gonna come down with his tent. I'm bringing him down on Thursday, and he wants to hang out with you, he wants to learn from you, and I'm sure you can learn from him. And, uh, and he's doing that of his own free will. He said, this is something I wanna be a part of. 
And I, I challenge each and everyone here in the room to be a part of this very important event. Thank you. Microphone two. Microphone two. Oh, I thought he was ahead of time. Uh, he's, he's here for another issue. Oh, I want to talk to them too, Rick. Oh, do you want to talk about that too? I knew you couldn't pass it up. Go to the sister, go to the sister first though. Sister first, yeah. yeah. Hi, I'm Jocelyn Coates. I'm with uh, Communication, Energy, and Paper Workers Union 2289, which represents the, the workers of Bell Alliant in Nova Scotia and workers in Bell Alliant in the other three Atlantic provinces as well. Uh, I'm also on the Halifax and Dartmouth District Labor Council. I'm an owner of their executive. And uh, I had an opportunity to go over with one of my sisters from work. Uh, the first time I was over there, I didn't get to the last weekend because I was involved with another activity related to uh, democracy. But uh, we went over and uh, such a welcoming environment, such a open environment, I got to go back the second time and take part in, part in a meeting. My background in university, I took uh, archeology span and anthropology and looking at all the, it was very interesting to have one of the First Nations persons there who was uh, discussing various things and I thought this is, uh, the fundamentals of human uh, interaction and democracy. It was very respectful, very inclusive, and it was absolutely an exciting thing to, to be part of and to witness. So uh, continue what you're doing. Thank you very much. Microphone three. All right, Rick. Uh, like I said, uh, I got us rising on a point of privilege, but before I do that, I got to stop and recognize how great you guys are at Occupy Nova Scotia. I went down there last night after I left this convention, and I stayed there till about one o'clock last night, and I spoke to some of the people that are in front of you today, and I was incredibly proud with what they were doing. You know, they, I participated in a march where we marched around Citadel Hill. I participated in a in a great forum where they came together and discussed issues in a, in a common forum. And they have, they, they've adopted different uh, forms of, of, of taking care of business. They have a mic check process. They have, they have an ability to tell everybody that they like what they're saying by shaking their hands. So they are organized and they're mobilized and they're energizing the people of Nova Scotia. And I'm damn proud of you for doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Carl. The reason why I rise Carl, to Carl, can, can we just thank them and then we'll get that yep, read on okay, the way? Well, okay, well, guys, thanks a lot, and I really appreciate <laughs> just, you guys yeah, coming in. Okay, he's got one response, and then, then you, you still got the microphone. Okay. okay, go ahead, brother. Very conscious of your time, but one more thing to end off. Um, first, I'd like to stress, please don't feel like you have to sleep there to be involved. <laughs> please. I, I haven't been sleeping there. <laughs> Uh, and if you're looking for a first place to get involved, our General Assembly is the main decision-making body, of course, with which everyone is welcome to, and that's nightly at 7 p.m., so that can be something to keep in mind. Um, our next larger scale event will actually be this Saturday. We're planning a march on Saturday for 1 p.m., um, calling it a bit of a tour to finance. Although there is disagreement over what the major issues are, there is some agreement that some of it takes place in the banks. And so. <laughs> We'll be going on a little tour of Halifax's financial district. Um, and so both symbolic gestures of support or, or your presence there is more than welcome. Um, and finally, one last comment. There was some talk and some words of your people and our people and, and you and us. And we, they're, they're, that's not true at all. This is a we. Uh, we are, Occup the Occupy movements around the world are there to stand in solidarity with any like-minded group or organization or person out there and we, we are we are all the same group in, yeah, in this movement that's coming we're 99 percent So on, I just want to really thank you. Uh, I had the opportunity to be down a couple times with you uh, uh, Saturday before last, and it's uh, really energizing. Uh, they're so dedicated, so committed, and it was a rally that we were at. And uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a great place to visit. I mean, I, I, I'm told I should be a tourist broker for this province. Well, I got a new great site to go to because it, it really is nice. And uh, uh, as I said this morning, uh, when the Taxpayers Federation said that these folks need a touch of reality, they're living reality. 
And so I, I think they're, they're doing a job uh, and, and exemplifying some of the struggles we've had. Uh, we will work with, um, and I'll volunteer uh, Tony and, and Kyle uh, through the Labor Council, the CLC, and the Federation. We'll, we'll work together and see if we can find a way to resolve the water issue, too. So we don't, no promise, but we'll work like hell on it for you. So. And I want to thank you for what you're doing and, and for coming over and sharing with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you, brothers and sisters.